Now if we go back to the first part of this handout, there's a section on Webmaster Tools. Nowadays it's harder to be found by potential clients. There's just so much competition. The best advice to rank, however, comes straight from the search engines themselves. So I've got a section here on Google and a section on Bing. Remember I said we're going to focus on both of those search engines, Bing and Google. Together they make up the vast market share. So if we can set this up for both of them, then we'll be in really good shape. If we've only set this up for one, well, we're reaching a good audience, but we want to reach the best audience, which would be for both. So, I, so both of these are very similar steps in that what we need to do is verify our websites at the search engines. Uh, when the web was a lot smaller, one of the things that we would want to do is submit our website to the search engines. But now, because there's so many websites out there, we need to do more than that. We need to verify our website. We need to verify the site that I'm telling the search engine is about is my site. Because conceivably, negatively, one of our competitors could submit a website as ours, and it's bad and full of spam and viruses, and that could affect our SEO, conceivably. But there are protections in place, which is to verify the site. So notice on both of them, I, I have a link about where we need to go. Well, first of all, both of them, the very first item has a link directly to sort of like the manual about all of SEO for each company. Uh, at some point, you want to follow those links and read them, because the things that I talk about in this class come from there and other books and just things that are synthesized through experience. But if you... Uh, take a quick look at the first link that'll take you over to the webmaster screen with a bunch of questions and answers and more to read and the guides and the forums and all of that webmaster academy you can even take courses on all of this watch a bunch of videos so all of the information of the do's and don'ts of Google search are right there on that link my top link same thing for Bing in the Bing section, if you click on that, that takes you to the Bing Webmaster Tools, where it goes on to talk about the do's and the don'ts, and they all, and they, uh, so many things overlap. Do this and don't do that. And the whole point of these things is to show you traffic like this. What's the traffic that I'm getting from this source or that source, etc. And it still holds, holds true, the saying, knowledge is power. So if we know as much as we can about our site and the search engines also know as much as it can that's very powerful because then we can make decisions about what's working what's not try harder on this give up on that this is a brand new algorithm so I've got to change my tactics the search engines do this as well every once in a while they change the algorithm they change the software the, the technique to rank websites and then people talk about, oh, the brand new penguin algorithm, the brand new hummingbird al algorithm, all of these things. And sometimes people are, are very uh, dismayed at the changes to the algorithm and such because unfortunately they're using gray hat techniques or black hat techniques. They're using these techniques that are bad. And when the search engine says, we will no longer accept websites that are not mobile friendly, people are wringing their hands and saying, now nah, I've got to redesign my website to be mobile friendly. Well, that's the state of the world going forward. More and more people are using mobile devices than a big old computer. And so now the search engines are saying your site should be look, should look good on a mobile device. And I designed my site in Dreamweaver and it wasn't, and now I've got to redo my site. Well, look at the state of the world. Everyone's got one of these in their pocket right now, probably. And even worse, people were using these tactics like keyword stuffing instead of developing a long tail keyword strategy they had three keywords and they put those keywords all over the place on their site and on the address you know everywhere all over the site and then the search engine said we are not going to have as much reliance on basic keywords anymore and people would wring their hands that's how i built my seo empire and then now that doesn't work anymore well all of these company both of these companies google and bing basically we're in their playground, we play by their rules, if you don't want to play on the playground, I mean if you don't want to follow the rules, don't play in the pay playground, but then you're losing a lot of traffic. No one looks at that phone book as much anymore or at all. We need to be on that search engine results page. So what we're going to do here is first set ourselves up in Bing. 
because it's almost the same sort of basic steps. I want to do this one here, but we have less experience on, probably. And then we will set up Google. Now they call it Search Console, and I still call it Google Webmaster Tools, but now it's called Search Console. And then we'll look at Google Analytics. And all of them, once we set one up, we'll see how relatively easy it is to set up the other ones. So we'll do Google, we'll do Bing first. The last item listed here under Bing section is the direct link. Bing.com slash toolbox. Go ahead and go to that address, either click on it or go to that website. Bing.com slash toolbox. It'll ask us to sign in first. And what it's asking for is if you've already got some sort of Microsoft account, you can log in with it. That means Hotmail, Outlook, uh, Xbox, Windows, Windows um, email, whatever email address that you have from Microsoft will let you into this. If you don't have one, we can create an account. We'll see how in a moment. But notice we've got sign in or sign up. I have a Hotmail, so I'm going to use it. If I don't, I will click sign up, and I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. But notice here, sign up now and receive $100 credit toward search marketing on Bing. Remember on day one I said we can do SEO the easy way or the hard way. And the easy way is for you to pay for it. For you to pay for visibility, to pay for impressions. That's the easy way of SEO. Pay for it. But it's an ever um, moving train that you can never catch up because your competitor can pay more. Notice how Bing is giving you $100 to start advertising on Bing search. That could be a great leg up against the competition. And it is useful to do some paid search once in a while, maybe to get the ball rolling, because there is a residual effect. If you, if you paid for search, you'll be number one, and then your money runs out, and eventually you drop down little by little, and then eventually you go back to page six, like you were before, perhaps. Or you might be on five now, better than before. But we're doing it the hard way in this class. More effort. More, more setup. But in the long term, it gets a better foundation that lasts longer. If you don't have an account, here's what it looks like. You're going to have to do this on your own. Sign up with Microsoft account, and it'll ask you for a bunch of information to fill in. And one of the things is an email address. If you've already got a Gmail, just use your Gmail again. It will let you do that. If you want a brand new Hotmail account or Outlook, you can click get a new email, and it'll give you one. You don't have to create an you don't have to create a brand new Hotmail for this if you don't want to. If you want to keep using the same login, Gmail login, you can, or Yahoo, or whatever. So if you don't have an account, you want to go through this process. It is a few steps. It'll ask for a phone number and such, and you want to fill this in legitimately because this is a lot of information that's going to get gathered. And if you lose track of it, I mean, if you lose your login info or you get hacked, how are you going to get back into it? One way is that there's a phone number. Um, that phone number will be the way for you to retrieve your locked account. So they don't call you. I've been using this for years. They don't call you. I don't get spammed by marketers. This is for security. This is to help prevent spammers and scammers and the like. So if you don't have a Hotmail or Outlook address, create one here. If you do have one, just click Sign In and sign in with your credentials. Either or, go ahead and do that, and I'll give you a quick moment to log in. If you have any trouble, call me over. We just want to log in. We don't want to do anything yet. Just log into the account. moment to either sign in or sign up. If you have any trouble, call me over. If you don't want to do this in class today, that's okay. You can do it at home. Just watch the videos again. What we're going to do is connect the, the search engines to your website. If you can't do that, if you don't want to do it right now, that's fine. But it will give you a moment to sign in or sign up.
It might not be fully connected. Okay. We're going to confirm once we've signed in here. Okay. And confirm that there is that link. Okay. okay. So we just want to sign in here. We will have the site and all of that stuff in just a moment. We won't have any trouble getting into this screen just yet. If you're not quite there, I'm going to move on, but um, again, you can go back and watch the video. So the point of this is I've uh, logged in and I can manage many, many accounts here, many, many websites. I can say uh, that I want to see the data, the traffic of many websites. The, the catch is that I have to verify that, that I have access to those websites. So I can either click add your site here or enter your address up there. Um, either or doesn't matter, but I'm going to, at the top here, where it asks for a website, I will put in my website. Let me just put in whateverwebsite.com and then add site. If you just set this up for the first time, it may ask you some more information than what mine says. Mine, yours might ask you maybe about the number of employees and such. Uh, fill it in as best as possible, but eventually, in, mine says something like this about my site. What's the address of the site? add a site map and then another question here. This site map here, notice Bing also gives you these little info bubbles. You can put your mouse there and it'll explain it more. But basically an, a, a site map is a list of all of the pages on your site. It's sort of like also the mall directory. You go to a mall, there's a directory of all the shops. So how many of you, if you, let's say you travel from San Diego to Los Angeles and you went to a brand new mall, and you wanted to go to a specific store. How many of you would wander around the mall until you found the store, as opposed to how many of you would go to the mall directory picture and find the, that store and then go to the store? Probably more people will, will look up, where's that store? And then they'll go to the store rather than sort of guessing. Um, so this site map is like that, a list of all of the pages on your site that the search engine, in this case Bing and also Google, will look at so that when someone searches for something, it says, oh, there's something in our database of that page that someone is searching for, let's display that result. Unfortunately, a sitemap is not a basic, simple, you know, word processing document. It is not literally a document where you write every page that you have. It is a technical document written in XML code that regular people cannot create, and I've been doing this for over 15 years, I would not try to create a sitemap. It's complicated. I would not write my own sitemap. I would get a plugin or I would get software to do it for me. 
WordPress lets you do that, and we'll talk about it later. Uh, Weebly and Wix and all of these ones, Squarespace, they have a version of it. You need to look up on your software how to make a, so a site map. Once you've got a site map, then you can add it here. I don't have a site map at the moment, so I'll add it later. You probably don't have a site map, so you'll have to leave it blank for the moment. And there's the question, when do you receive the most traffic? The search engines are going to be checking on your site periodically. They're going to be browsing your site. They're going to be sending their, their spiders, their software, to browse every page of your site to see if anything new is new. And they're going to check out your site once in a while. That's going to cause traffic to your site. That could cause slowdown to your site. It says here, what's the time of the day where you get the most traffic so that we don't slow down your site when we visit your site? Because now you're going to have Bing and Google looking at your site on a regular basis. Now, I don't know. I don't know what time of the day my traffic, I get most of my traffic. I can't select anything. But as we set this up and leave it running for a few days and weeks and such, and we can check here, I get the most traffic at 3 p.m. So I might go back and tell Bing and Google, don't check my site between this time, don't slow down my site at this time, my customers are on my site at this time. I don't know what time to select, so I'll leave default. So I did not change anything here, but I can do it again later. I can change it later if I, if I need to, so click Add. And then here's how you verify your site, because in the real world, if someone asks me, where do you live? And I'll tell them, I live up on that uh, mansion on the hill in La Jolla. Who's going to believe me until I open, until I get my butler to open my mansion for me? People are not going to believe me that that's my house until I can verify it's my house. Same thing with your websites here. I can claim I have any access to any website here, but it won't believe me until I accomplish one of these three things. I'm not going to accomplish all three. I'm going to select one of them to accomplish. Don't even bother with number three. This one is complicated. I don't even bother with it. Don't do number three. You're going to do either number one or number two. And this is where I cannot show up here on the board for everyone because everyone's a little different. I can tell you in general, and then I recommend call me over for the help. But let me tell you what these three mean, these, num these two. Number one is, remember, you choose one of these. Number one is that you download this file, which has your unique credentials. Then you upload it to your website server. Usually that's through you know, your, your file manager or your FTP software, FileZilla. CyberDuck, whatever you use to connect to your site to upload files, you upload this file to your server. Bing will assume that on your website.com it can find that file. I come back to Bing and I click verify. It will search my site for that file and if it found that I'm verified. Because I can't do that my competitor can't do this to me. What if my competitor wanted to see all my traffic? My competitor would have to upload a file to my server, and they have no access to my server, my login information. So my competitor would not be able to claim my website for themselves on Bing or Google. That's one possible way. Download this file, upload it to your site, come back and click Verify. The other way is, if I take this line of code here in the gray box, and copy it. If I copy this line of code, then I need to go back to my website to edit my website. Edit my website and paste into my website this line of code. Where? Uh, it says specifically in the head section of your website. Some of you, if you're using Dreamweaver, there's a way to do it. Some of you, if, if you're using WordPress, there's another way. Squarespace, there's another way. This, this, there's lots of ways to do this. So what I'm going to do is take a quick break. If you'd like to accomplish either one or two, try it. If you're having trouble, raise your hand and call me over. It's first come, first serve. And let's give you a couple of minutes to see if you can do either one of those. Once we do that, we'll go on. If you can't do it right now, do it at home if you don't have your login information.
to support some of them. Would you put this on every page or just on your home page? Well, um, this one. I'd love to have the analytics page. Well, you will get the analytics for every, every page, but if you do step one, it doesn't matter because it's that one file uploaded to your server. So it'll give you the data for everything. If you do the second one, you can add this meta tag to the head section of your default web page. So even on that one, it says you don't need to add this to all your pages, just your home page, and it will then give you data for everything. If anyone, if anyone can do this, I would recommend to do it. If you can't do it, um, wait to do it at home. Anyone need any help maybe getting any of these done? Is there an FTP program on this uh, computer? Uh, no. SCP. No, you'd have to download it and then download FileZilla and then you can use it. So usually on this on this time, a lot of people asking are raising their hands for this help, but I guess everyone's on on point. <laughs> okay. Well, if you are able to do it, I would recommend people to do it. If you can't or don't want to at the moment, I would do it at home. And the concept is that I'm verifying my site on Bing, either step one or step two. Let's say I did one of those steps, I would click, I would come back and click verify. And then in my case, because this is a fake account, it's going to give me a big old red that I didn't do it right. If it did work, it would give me a green check mark, and it would take me back to my Bing Webmaster screen here. When we come back next time, we're going to see, well, what did we set up? Right now, we're just spending time setting it up, because this is going to be gathering data traffic to your site. But if it's not going to give you data from the past. So you want to set it up as soon as you can and let it run and collect the data so that you can have actionable information as time goes on. When we come back next time, we will see that we can see the data in the last 30 days, 90 days, whatever, and we'll see what all of this means. We're going to do Google in a moment, but I want to kind of check if you're able to do it, do it. If not, do it at home. I'm going to move on to, to, to Google, and it's going to be very similar on Google. Question? If you're working on someone else's website, would you have to insert information to create a Possibly. Let me show you in the, uh, let me tell you how I do it in the real world. I create these Bing Webmaster connections for all of our clients. So through my login information, I set this up for all the clients. And then I can give access to, to back to the client for them to log in if they want to. So you, you don't need their information um, to set it up for someone else. But what you do need is to be able to do one of these verification methods. So you might need then their login information to edit their site. Let's say then, I do set it up, and in detail next time we'll talk about what we've set up. Let's do now Google, and the thing about Google is it's been around longer, it's the larger search engine, it gets the most traffic and such, but it is valuable to have both of these set up to see a bit the bigger picture. And if I know how to set it up with one, I can set up the other ones relatively easy. The only thing is that with Bing, because they were invented later, they sort of figured things out and they put all of the information on one login. All of the information from Bing is back on, you know, bing.com slash toolbox. Here's where you can see a variety of information. For Google, they've got it in separate websites, which is on my handout. And I keep telling students they'll probably merge them together at some point. And from what I'm seeing actually, most likely actually they won't. They're going to keep separating them out into a bunch of different websites that you have to keep track of. My handout says we're going to go to google.com slash webmasters. That'll give you some information. Then a little bit later, we're going to go over to google.com slash analytics. That'll give you other data. And then they've also got, which we won't talk about, but we've got google.com slash adsense. 
another website about something else related to search. That's for the paid search. Bing basically integrates all of these into one. Bing.com slash toolbox. But over on Google, we need to know to go to each one of these different website addresses to look at the data and to use the different items. For the moment, let's go to google.com slash webmasters. Now they also call it Search Console. I still call it the old way because that's how I've known it for years, but now they also call it Search Console. And basically this is to set, this is to verify your site with Google and to check other data about it. So let's click on Search Console there. Now it's going to ask you to log in with your credentials either with an existing Gmail account or you can create a new one. If you go through the process of create account, again it'll ask you to fill in, fill in a bunch of information and it'll ask you to create a brand new Gmail or it might ask you I prefer to use my current email. Sometimes it shows that, sometimes it doesn't, it's weird. But if you already have a Yahoo Mail, I can use my Yahoo Mail to set this up. If you've already got a Gmail, use it. The question is, do I use a personal one or a business one? It doesn't matter, it's up to you. As I said just a bit earlier, I, when I do this for clients, I log in with my personal credentials, and then I set it up for a client, and then I give access to the client to their data. We can add more managers to this data, as many as we want. Therefore, everyone logs in with their own credentials. I don't give everyone my Gmail address and password to log in with. Everyone logs in with their own. I'll show how to do that a little later to give more people access to the data. But at the moment, you want to sign in or create an account. And then I'll show you what to do with it when we sign in. Okay, so once you log in, you'll have the Search Console. Notice here I have a variety of clients set up. You can work with as many website properties as you want. Uh, I think up to 100, so I've got all of these clients, all of this data. The point of this is, okay, when you set it up the first time, you probably don't see anything. Do you see a button that says Add Property? It may be different, actually, for you guys. Do you see something like this, or do you see like a little, like a little video? Okay, if you see the button that says add property, you want to click on that. This button that says add property. Because Google can actually track uh, data of a website or an app, an Android app. So if you've got an Android app, you can also track that data. But anyway, add property, website, and there's a few notes here regarding this. Let me write some notes right over here. When setting up Google Search Console, Add the www version and the non www version. So we have to add when it's asking us what's your website. We have to do http www.victor.com and then we have to do it again for http victor.com. We have to set this up with the www version and the non www version. Which one you do first or second doesn't matter. You should do both. 
because technically Google sees them as two different websites. That's known as a subdomain. Technically, they're two different websites because some people might go to your website by typing www.victor.com and some people that live in the 21st century will just type victor.com. So Google will tell us both bits of data, so we should set it up. If your website, if your website has security, also add it. And what that means is, does your site have HTTPS, victor.com, HTTPS, www.victor.com? You will only have the HTTPS if you've paid for what is known as a as an SSL certificate. So security comes from an SSL certificate, which is not free. No, I used to say that all the time. It's not free, but now sometimes it's free if you buy a brand new account. If you go buy an account at Bluehost or GoDaddy or Hostmaster or whatever, because they're all in competition with each other for you to buy their website with them, nowadays a lot of these companies give you one free year of SSL. Not everyone needs that security though. You really need it if you are an e-commerce website. If you're selling products and you're taking people's you know, home address and credit card info, you better have security on that website because everyone wants to see that lock up there. You don't get that lock for free. You get an SSL certificate. So when I'm setting this up for Google, it doesn't matter for Bing. For Bing, it doesn't matter if I put in the www and non-ww. But for Google, it matters to put the w and non-ww, and if you've got security, put both of those as well. In our case, I'm just going to get us started off with the non-ww one. I want to add the other ones a little later, the WW version. So I'll click continue. And here, depending on your website, yours will probably look different than mine. Um, this again is sort of similar to what we did with Bing, where it says choose one of these methods to verify your site. Mine has told me a recommended method, which may be different than yours, of uploading a file. Just like on Bing, it said download this file, upload it to your server, come back here and click verify. This is one of the possible ways that Google is telling me to do this. So only I have access to my server, not my competitor. So I would then get this uh, this file, download it, upload it, come back and verify, and I'm done. Alternate methods. Here's the HTML tag version. Just like Bing said, take this line of code, add it to your website, and verify. Uh, Google gives me this as well, HTML tag. I could do one of those methods, come back and verify. This third way, then, is like Bing's third way, which is domain provider. Don't even try with this one. This is the one that I'm saying, I don't even try this one. I've been doing this 15 years. I would not try to do this method. We've got two other methods here, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager. If you've already set up Google Analytics before today, you can use Google Analytics to vouch for your Google Search Console, and then it'll verify it. But most likely, you've taken this class because you don't have this set up, so you can't use analytics to vouch for this, so you can't use that one. And same thing with Google Tag Manager. If you've already set up Tag Manager, you can use that to vouch for Search Console and verify. So any one of these methods should work. Yes? Could you repeat that again? I didn't quite get it, because I do have a Google Analytics. So what do you mean by vouching? Well, this whole thing is that we need to verify ownership of the site. So if you did set up Google Analytics, then you can tell Search Console, I've already set up Google Analytics, I am the legitimate owner, please use that to verify Search Console. So that would be the method I would use versus any other methods? Most likely. 
be aware of what it, what it asks you to do here that you should have your asynchronous tracking code basically means you have the latest version of the code not the not the old version of the Google Analytics code from two years ago the latest version of it this is another one that if you're able to do it you should do it but if you can't then you can do it at home and since we're very close to the end of the day, I have to zoom by and mention the third thing, which is Google Analytics, which is almost the same thing as this. You have to verify it, uh, which I'll do right now. But any quick questions on Google Search Console before I go on? We will see what we, knew, what we use it for and such next time. But we want to set it up as soon as we can. If you can't do it today, do it sometime this week. We want to set it up so we can see the data. The last item that I'll look at is Google Analytics, Google.com Analytics. This is the one that has much more of the fame in this, in this business. How many of you before this class have heard of Google Analytics? There we go. How many of you before this class have heard of Google Search Console, also known as Google Webmaster Tools? Very few people. So this is the big one, and, and Google Analytics is the one where you're going to spend most of your time. Google Analytics is going to give you more data to work with. Webmaster Tools is a bit more to check on the health of your site. Are there broken links? Is the server down, etc.? But we'll look at it later. Google Analytics. Like I said, I wish, I, I would think that they're going to merge Analytics and Search Console eventually, and now they're going in the opposite way because now they've got Google Analytics Premium. I haven't looked at it. I don't know exactly what's new about it, so don't ask me. Uh, I don't know what... I mean, I haven't used Google Adometry. I've used Google Analytics for mobile, but not everyone needs that. And then plain old analytics. What's that? That one's also related to putting out ads out there to get more traffic. Google Ads, yes. Exactly, because it could be valuable to put out ads to get more traffic. So, just see more data about how your how your ads are working. But for us, what we want is the plain old analytics. So at the top, you should see analytics. Go ahead and click on that. I guess. Uh, sign in or sign up now if you're brand new your screen will most likely look different than mine your screen will have three icons and then a button what does that button say get analytics or sign up for analytics maybe so if you're brand new your screen will look a little different but if if you've used it like me, notice what I've got here is a bunch of clients. They're in their own folder. Google calls each of these folders an account. So this is what's confusing. It's going to say create an account. I'll show you in a moment. But all of these are accounts for different clients. And in the account, I have a property. So for a particular client, I have these properties. you most likely then are seeing a screen that looks like this new account if you haven't set this up before if you have then then you're good for the day but if you haven't set this up it's going to ask you here new account account name and website name this is what i'm saying about this confusion you have a google analytics account so why is it asking for another account the account is the topmost level of organization. That the account is the folder, the folder where you can tra mo track multiple websites, website properties. So let's say I'm doing an account of Victor's Bakery, and then I'm doing a website of, if I get to that point eventually, YouTube. Let's say I want to track the data of YouTube and my website and my shopping cart 
I want different properties. I want it to track data in different ways. Those are different properties in one account. So probably tangibly for us at the moment, you're going to type here main website. I want the data of my main website. I don't mean the home page, I mean the main your main website. This folder, this account is tracking this data of this property, main website. And here, the URL, the address, I either select the HTTP version or the HTTPS version. And here it does not matter if you've got the WW or not. This will collect so much data that it'll want to target the data to you in a certain way. Some screens and some content may not be visible to you depending on your category here. There's no quite wrong or wrong right or wrong answer, but I sort of suggest for you to select other because that one will show you the most content and the most data for your website. So if you do find one of these categories that fits for you, like I mean, there's a real estate category, that might be fine, but it might not show you every possible thing you can do with, with analytics. And maybe you don't want a lot of complications, so do go ahead and choose your proper industry category. Time zone should be correct. If not, Make sure, you, make sure you set it. And then we've got all of these which are optional. It, if you don't want to be a part of any of these like mailing lists and such, you can turn it off. It doesn't matter if you select them or not. I'll turn them off. And then at the bottom click Get Tracking ID. Then there's the contract that no one reads but everyone agrees to. You want to look at that and click accept or don't. If you don't accept it, you can't use analytics. And then it'll take you to the screen. Tracking ID. This is how you verify it because what's to stop me from seeing my competitor's data? This. I have to, there's only one way to do this. Basically, you have to copy this code and paste it into your site. There isn't the one about uploading a file or verifying in a different way. You have to copy this code to your website, and then it will track the data. Now this one does says, to get the benefits, copy and paste this code into every web page. If you want to see the traffic going to your About page, this code also needs to be on your About page. But if you're using a modern tool like WordPress or Squarespace, it usually uses templates. Even Dreamweaver has templates. So basically, you need to put this code into your template of your site so that this gets applied to all of the pages of your site. If you don't do it that way and only add it to your home page, you're not getting the full amount of data. And so, this is as far as we can go with this. You need to figure out where do I put this code into my site, somewhere in the head section of the site. If you're using some of these modern tools, they will simply say, plug in your tracking ID number, which is this right here. So on some of these, they, they say, just add your Google Analytics tracking ID. Okay, copy and paste that in, and it does it for you. For others, you have to copy this into all your pages, save, and then it'll work. And there is no button here that says verify, really. You have to copy and paste the code, and then in about 48 hours, if you do it the first time, it'll check your site at some point, and then start gathering your data. When we come back next time, we're going to then see what's this data, what can we do with it, more advice, and then eventually we'll talk about, we've created this keyword list, what do we do with it? So, um, final quick questions? Okay. Usually we try to have a little lab time, but we're, on, we're out of time today. Make sure you uh, save anything that you wrote here onto a flash drive. I'm going to put my notes 
that I wrote into the network folder. And if you'd like a copy of those notes, you can get them from the network folder and I'll upload the videos, request those videos, and I'll send them off to you. And so, if you came in a little bit late, make sure you sign in. Or, uh, if you're new today, make sure you make sure you uh, register. 